What's up, everybody? It's Lexi D. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm still figuring out the name of the podcast. And, you know, that has been one of my biggest hurdles. I definitely have quite a bit of topics that I want to get into. So I'm not going to let the name of the show be the thing that stops me from posting. So in this episode, I wanted to talk about when you just don't feel like it like specifically when you don't feel like taking care of yourself and this is this is inspired by um a current not a current um, but a recent conversation that I've had with a friend of mine who has been going through something and you know she really was just lamenting to me that she's tired of having to pick herself up. And I've had those same sentiments after things don't go a way that I'm expecting where I'm just like, I'm tired. I don't, I don't feel like having to do the work to take my care of myself. And I've shared this recently with my therapist, those same thoughts of sometimes it's exhausting to take care of yourself. Like for me, my go-to when I'm stressed, I want sugar. Specifically, I love cupcakes. I have my favorite place that I go to and I will either get lemon or I will get red velvet. Lemon has most recently become my favorite. And if I'm not getting cupcakes, then what it used to be was a Kit Kat. So some type of chocolate, but usually a Kit Kat along with something sour, which would usually be the Sour Patch Watermelon Gummies. Like those two paired together when I was stressed out. Oh, and add some hot Cheetos. Oh my gosh. Like just everything that I could have wanted to help with my stress relief. And, you know, ever since I've started counting calories a few months ago, the thing about counting calories is that you quickly learn that for lack of another way of describing this, I'm not a nutritionist or a dietitian. Not all calories count the same. Meaning what I mean specifically is that not all calories will satiate you in the same way. So if I have a cupcake that is mostly, um, if I have a cupcake, it's usually between maybe like 400 to 500 calories, which is a lot. But the this is the satiety how do how you say that word the being satisfied being satiated there we go after having that cupcake is a different experience than being satiated after having a meal that's anywhere between 400 to 500 calories and so i'm mentioning this because i've had to find other ways to cope because i did not want to have those excess calories and so it's force me in positions where my go-to for soothing myself, I've had to find other mechanisms. And I know in general, the way to cope with certain things is to go through them. So for me, it looks like sitting down, I have a series of questions. I ask myself of what's going on? What am I feeling like? what happened, what triggered this feeling, like all these different kinds of questions to help me get to the root of what's going on with me. And all of that helps, like being able to talk about it, especially when I don't have somebody else to talk about things with or to prompt me in that way, it helps. But that also takes time. It's not as quick as getting a sugar fix, right? Um, And so when my friend was sharing with me that she's just tired of picking herself up, you know, it is sometimes you just feel tired. Sometimes it is hard and there is no way around it. And this is where our support system comes in. You know, I share it with her. You don't have to pick yourself up alone. Um, I'm here, of course, like even if you just want to stop by and there's nothing that you want to talk about, like I'm here for you. And I think that is helpful too. helpful giving that reminder of like, hey, even if you just want to like sit on FaceTime or whatever and not say anything, just to have some sort of presence of someone else so that you're not isolated going through this feeling. Um, 
going through whatever tough feeling that you that you have right and I think you know sometimes of course we do want our alone time but it's also important not to isolate ourselves too much to the point where we stop living our lives you know um and so when I think of just kind of this whole phenomenon of just sometimes you don't want to pick yourself up I was sharing this with my therapist because I was sharing with her you know What's driven me to therapy this time, and I've been in therapy before, is that I've been exhausted having to walk myself through a lot of what I've been feeling. I see a therapist as a partner in helping me to understand how I'm feeling and to resolve things that are unresolved. And so I had been looking for a therapist. I had been looking for a therapist um, since... September of, I officially got my referral in September of um, 2021 and I wasn't matched with her until like, I want to say March of this year. So it had taken some time to match with her. And during that time, I really had to, I had to take care of myself. Because I was going through a challenging time at work and in my personal life and I had been trying my best to cope with things on my own and really I had no other option, you know, like I was talking to my support system, you know, praying and just doing all these things. But like, as I mentioned, therapy for me is a way like a way for someone to partner with you on getting through your feelings And so when we don't have that support system, I mean, there's still moments where even though I have a therapist, I'm not going to have access to her 24 seven. So don't get me wrong. Like, I know I can't use my therapist as a crutch. One of my previous therapists specifically called that out, that there were, there were moments, there started to become moments where there was less and less than I was taught that I was talking about. And so she specifically called out for me that she does not want me to become codependent on her, that she's giving me the tools I need to fly on my own. And that's valid. But also what happens in those moments when you don't feel like flying on your own and you want somebody to hold your wings up, (laughs) you know, sometimes for me, what that looks like is it looks like is sometimes I do allow myself to have a cupcake to have something sweet I don't allow it to become a habit and I usually will challenge that before I do it so that it's not a habitual kind of thing and something that is subconscious and then I don't even enjoy it right because that would suck too but I think it's finding a balance between those moments where you do just kind of go okay I'm going to have the cookie. Like, that's another thing for me. Salted caramel cookies from Arby's. Oh, my gosh. And when they're heated up, I'm a sweets kind of person, y'all. I'm a sweets kind of person. And so sometimes when we just don't feel like taking care of ourselves, I'm learning, too, that there's there's levels to it. Like, ultimate, the ideal version of myself takes care of myself by sitting down and having a mindful conversation about what's going on. But sometimes I'm exhausted. So my soothing techniques could look like, and this has varied over the years, watching 90 Day Fiance. I love that show, okay? This season's kind of a mess, or kind of boring, rather. Watching The Office, watching Golden Girls, having my cupcake, um, just whatever to sometimes ease, maybe ease into that. And I've learned too, that sometimes what I'll do is I'll use, I'll use those things as kind of like a segue into the conversation I know I need to have with myself. Um, but I will say whenever I do spend that time and have that conversation, it's always transformational for me. So This is just something to consider of like, what is it that you do when you have those moments where you just don't feel like picking yourself up? How do you motivate yourself to do that? 
maybe for some listeners, do you feel like it's your, your responsibility, you know? Um, because one of the things that I got from therapy from my former therapist was this idea or for me fact that I'm responsible for taking care of my needs. And that can be a burdening thought to think about like, oh, I have to take care of my needs. That means I need to speak up when I don't feel like it. Like it's the ultimate, one of the ultimate forms of being an adult is taking responsibility for your needs and your feelings. (laughs) And it's hard and it's not fun sometimes. And it's isolating sometimes because there can be so many people around you who don't do that. (laughs) You know, it's so much easier to place the blame and the fault in other people's hands versus being accountable for ourselves. So I would encourage you listeners to consider the questions that I've asked um, that I've posed to you all and just really reflect on what taking care of yourself looks like. It helps me when I went through that, had that revelation, <laughs> when I had that revelation with my former therapist about me being responsible for taking care of my needs, she had me walk through this exercise where I spoke to my younger self. And so whenever I'm feeling a way, I envision my younger self and I envision that I'm taking care of her, taking care of her. And that helps me to really see how important it is. Because when I do have those moments when I want to just abandon ship, right? And I don't want to do it. I have to remember that I'm also abandoning her, you know, because who else is going to take care of us better than we can take care of ourselves. And also not being afraid to reach out and ask for help when we need it. That's why I went back into therapy because I was like, I can't carry this burden on my shoulders on my own. I need help. So thank you all for listening and I will catch you all in the next one.